Hi, I'm Rich Keith, and I'm the director of the Kalamazoo Valley Bird Observatory here in Michigan since 1988. I'm also responsible for the bird banding permit of Whitefish Point Bird Observatory, Michigan's Upper Peninsula, since 1992. Today I'd like to talk to you about the use of the Michigan banding pliers. But first, we need to know a little bit more about the bands that we use. Bands are issued in North America to licensed bird banders by the Bird Banding Lab in Maryland and the Canadian Bird Banding Office. These bands are made in specific sizes to sp fit specific species, uh, with a few exceptions in which you have to use a leg gauge to determine the proper band size to use. first thing to know is these bands have been developed over time and their issue by the banding labs has been temporal. Size 0, 1, 2, and 3 came first. Then as need was recognized for additional sizes, they were added with the first edition taking the size designation nearest, the, nearest and adding A, next adding B, then C, and then D. This series is size 1, 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D. Note the size 1C was determined too close to the other sizes and is no longer available in North America. Placed in order of their internal diameter, these bands would go 1, 1B, 1A, and 1D. Likewise, when need for a band size smaller than 0 was determined, it was designated 0A. In size 3, we have 3, 3A, and 3B. Putting all of these bands in size order, we have 0, 1, 1B, 1A, 1D, 2, 3, 3B, 3A. The next size is 4, which also come in a few flavors, but I will only address pliers with openings up to size 4. And this is the leg gauge that we'll use to determine the size band that goes on each bird. This is a leg gauge that I've had for many years. As I mentioned, a few species you have options for what band to use. Most species is going to have a specific size listed in your banding manual and that's the size that you want to put on the bird. Uh, some of the birds that we have options on here are like brown thrashers, uh, blue jays, eastern towhees. In fact the 1D size was developed specifically for towhees and indeed probably is the most common band we use on those but sometimes we still use the 1A and rarely we still will use a size 2 band on an eastern towhee but the only way we know that is by using this leg gauge. Um, getting to know your leg gauge, if you're working with those species that do have options, is very important. The relationship of these recommended band sizes here to the actual diameter, internal diameter of the bands does vary. For instance, size 2, which is one I frequently will use, is this is much smaller than the actual band opening, so I have learned that a fairly snug fit of a size 2 will work on my Blue Jays and Thrashers here. But you need to be familiar with your own leg gauge to know that. This is our bigger banding pliers for the size 2-3 bands. These are our size 2-3 pliers, basically the same thing as the 0A-1A pliers, just bigger with a bigger opening pin and bigger holes. Um, I'll open the size 2 band here, same thing, we want that split in the pin lined up with a split in the opening open it up wide enough just wide enough to go over the bird's leg place the size 2 band in the front hole the smallest hole and slowly close front hole on the size 2-3 pliers is for size 2, the back hole is for size 3. The largest plier that we make, the 3B, 3A, and size 4 band pliers, uh, is identical to this except with bigger holes. The 3B and 3A bands go in the front hole and the size 4 band goes in the back hole. Now we can talk about the smallest pliers, the 0A, 1A, which are probably the most commonly used 
suppliers for passerine banding. The opening on the 0A is virtually the same size as the pin. Now, this one happens to be fairly round and goes down, but I do not have it lined up with the split and the band and the split and the pliers. So I'll open it a little ways, and I will center it, and then open it the rest of the way. This band is adequately opened because it's relatively uniform on both sides. Zero A. They're never perfectly round, but that's a good fit. size zero that I'm going to see if I can ruin, which is not something you normally want to do, but I think it's something that will happen, so people need to know about it. So if we open it too far, in this particular case, it's still fairly even, so this band probably will close round, but before I would put that on the bird, I would put it in my pliers, and I would bring it part way and make sure that that's going to be the case, that this, bird, this band is going to close around before I squeeze it all the way on the bird's leg. And in this case, it did. Let's try a bigger band. Maybe, it'll, maybe it will uh, overlap. Let's see. I'm going to start with this not lined up with the pin, which is the wrong way to do it. It's hard to make something wrong when want to. Again, I've opened this band way too far. In fact, in this case, it looks like I may have stressed this band in the middle, so I would not put this band on a bird's leg if I accidentally, for some reason, opened it this far. Um, what, ha what can happen is sometimes you get a band like this, and you don't get it seated in the holes in the plier. It's in the wrong place, anyway. And because of that, when you go to close it, you can end up overlapping the band. Now this is an extreme case. This would never happen when you're actually banding a bird. But you need to be aware that if you don't get that band properly seated in the holes and the pliers, this is something that can happen. And you can have a bird's leg trapped in there, which is very bad for the bird. This is the first set of pliers that I made back in 2005. As you can see, they've developed quite a patina over the years. Um, in my particular situation, they don't really get rusty, but they do turn this darker color, which is absolutely fine. Um, occasionally, they will um, start binding up so that they don't close by themselves, and when they do that, they won't hold the band for you while you're putting it on the bird's leg. So in that case, it's okay to go ahead and put a single drop, a very small drop of 3-in-1 oil, work the pliers several times, and then wipe all that oil off. In fact, I like to wrap mine in a paper towel and leave it overnight to soak the oil off. And then you still may have to wipe just a little film of oil off there the first several times you use it. But make sure you do that, and in 10 years, this is what your pliers may look like. In fact, sometimes the way I know these pliers need to be oiled is I start hearing a bird squeak, and I'm looking around, where's that bird? Where's that bird? Where's that bird? And then I figure out, okay, that's my pliers squeaking. Stainless steel bands and ink alloy bands require a different plier for closing. We mentioned the hard bands, the stainless steel and the ink alloy. For those bands, you need a different plier that we do not make to close the band. These are available, I believe, from the distributors. Um, I'm blanking on the name of them right now, but uh, if you look in the uh, advertisements, you will find these five-hole pliers, and they're made differently for closing the harder stainless steel bands. And then the other thing that's a real difficulty, the only stainless steel that I use is the 1A stainless that we use on the Northern Cardinals and the Rose-Breasted Grosbeaks, and opening those is very difficult. I was able to find a pair of snap ring pliers, retaining ring pliers, that I was able to modify, grind this down small enough to go inside of the band and then pry it open. Hopefully you can find something locally that you might be able to do that with. Another thing every bander is going to need to know, know how to use and have in their toolkit are band removing tools. These are two of the band removal tools that are on the market today. This heavier version will probably last you forever, but it only really works on the 1A and the 1B size bands because you have to get these tines in between the band and the bird's legs. This smaller, more delicate band removal tool works well on the 
0A through 1 bands, in fact I've even used these to remove a band from a hummingbird, if I must use them because there's no room between the band and the bird's legs on the 1A and the 1B, I will just open the band enough that I can get the larger tool in to then remove it. If you do bend the tines on these, you can straighten them, but, that, but you can only do that so many times before they will break.